In this video, I'm going to teach you how to write the electron configurations of the two simplest atoms, hydrogen and helium. The electron configuration is a description of the arrangement of the electrons in an atom when that atom is in the ground state. So what do we mean when we say ground state? Ground state just simply means that all of the electrons are in the lowest possible energy level. And if you recall, we represent the energy levels of an atom using the principal quantum number n. So n equals 1 is our lowest possible energy level, and that's followed by n equals 2, which is followed by n equals 3, and so on. If you're not familiar with quantum numbers, I do encourage you to back up a few videos and, and learn them, because I am going to be referencing them quite a bit in this video. In addition to teaching you how to write the electron configurations of hydrogen and helium, we are also going to go over assigning quantum numbers, drawing orbital diagrams, as well as orbital box diagrams, and energy diagrams for these electrons. So let's go ahead and get started with hydrogen, which is abbreviated with the capital H. Now before we write the electron configuration or the box diagram or any of these other things, the first thing we need to know is the number of electrons in a hydrogen atom. And the fastest way to determine that is by looking at the periodic table. So if we focus on hydrogen, we can see that its atomic number is one. Atomic number of one means that it has one proton, and that also means that it has one electron. For all atoms, the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. So let's take this information back. Hydrogen has one electron, and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is assign quantum numbers to this one electron. We're going to come up with a set of quantum numbers that satisfies the rule of the electron being in the ground state. So we're going to write our quantum numbers, and we're going to come up with the n, the l, the m sub l, and also the m sub s. So starting with the n um, principal quantum number, it's describing the overall energy level. Remember, we want to give it the lowest possible energy level, which is n equals 1. Then for the principal quantum number l, remember the values of l depend on the values of n. When n equals 1, the only possible value of l is 0. Now we move on to m sub l. This also depends on the value of l, and when L equals zero, the only possible value of m sub L is equal to zero. So, so far this is pretty easy. Now we move on to m sub S, the spin, which is telling us if the electron is spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. These two orientations of spin are exactly equal in energy. The clockwise spin and the counterclockwise spin have the exact same energy associated with them. So here it doesn't really matter if we assign it to be spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's just go ahead and say plus one half. That's just my personal choice. So those are a set of quantum numbers that would be reasonable for the hydrogen electron when it's in the ground state. Let's think about the orbital that this electron is residing in. Let's, let's name that orbital. So we know that L equals zero corresponds to what we call the S orbital. And when the um, S orbital is in the N equals one level, specifically, we call that a one S orbital. So that's its very specific name. And those are the quantum numbers. Let's move on now to drawing what we call an orbital diagram, or bital diagram. This is also sometimes called a box diagram. In an orbital diagram, we draw either a line, like a dash, or a box, which is why sometimes we call it a box diagram, to represent each orbital. So every orbital that is being used by an atom is represented by either a single dash or by a box. Underneath that dash or box, we write the orbital's name. So since for hydrogen, since we've determined from the quantum numbers that we're dealing with a 1s orbital, we would write something that looks like this, a box, with a 1s underneath it. Or if this was, if we were not using boxes, we would write it like this, just a single line with 1s underneath it. So again, we use the box or the line plus a label to represent the orbital. And then we use an arrow to represent the electron that is occupying that 
orbital. So since hydrogen has one electron, we've determined that right there, what we're going to do is draw one arrow inside of this box and we're going to, just by convention, we're going to draw the arrow pointing in the upward motion. So we'd write the one arrow in the box and let's put some labels on this. This arrow represents the electron in hydrogen and this box represents the 1s orbital. So this is a picture, a diagram of what the um, electron configuration would be for hydrogen. Again, this is not the electron configuration. This is just a picture of the electron configuration. Another way that we could represent this is with what we call an energy level diagram. And an energy level diagram is kind of like a box diagram, but it is written next to an energy axis. So in the energy level diagram, in this time, just to make it a little bit different, I'm gonna go ahead and use the dashed line. You could also see this with boxes though, it could be either way. And with an energy level diagram, we write the label of the orbital to the right. You have, if you're following my videos, you've already seen something that kind of represents the energy level, like this sort of thing right here that we drew. So we're just working down here with the one S. So we've got this, and then again, we're gonna use an arrow to represent the electron that is occupying that 1s orbital. So again, we haven't actually written an electron configuration yet. We've just done quantum numbers, and then we've done some diagrams to represent the electron. Now we are actually ready for the electron configuration. The electron configuration is an abbreviated version of an energy level diagram or an orbital box diagram, which is why we went through the process of actually drawing these out because these energy level diagram and box diagram is actually where the electron configuration comes from. It's a shorter way of writing this, a non-picture way of writing this. In the electron configuration, we write the name of the orbital. So our orbital's name we've already determined is 1s. And then in the superscript position right here, we write the quantity or number of electrons that are in that orbital. So in this case, we have one electron in the 1s orbital. And so we write the one right up there. So let's go ahead and label this as well. 1s is the name of the orbital. And this superscript one is the number of electrons that are in that orbital. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's do another example. The other example that we're going to do, if you recall, is helium, which we abbreviate HE. And remember, the first piece of information that we need is the number of electrons in helium. So we go to our periodic table and we take a look at helium, atomic number of two, meaning that it has two protons and also two electrons. So now we have two electrons to work with. And for practice, again, we're going to assign quantum numbers to both of those electrons. So that means we're going to come up with an N, an L, an M sub L, and an M sub S for both of the electrons. We're going to have two sets of quantum numbers. Now we want, again, we want these quantum numbers to be in the ground, or the electrons to be in the ground state, which means that we want our energy levels to be as low as possible. So we'll start with N equals one. And we've already talked about how when N equals one, L has to be zero and M sub L has to be zero. And like our last example, let's just start off with plus one half for the spin. For the second electron, we can continue to work in n equals one, l equals zero, m sub l equals zero, as long as we give the second electron a different spin. Remember, no two electrons can have the exact same set of quantum numbers, but as long as they're different in one area, it's okay. So these are the quantum numbers for our two electrons. Let's do an orbital diagram for this. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's let's assign the name of the orbital that's being used for both of these. When n equals 1, put that right there. When l equals 0, that means we have an s. So both of these electrons are in 1s. So let's draw our orbital diagram or the box diagram. In the orbital diagram, we use a box to represent the orbital. 
we put the orbital's label underneath it, or we use a straight line to represent the orbital and put the orbital's label underneath it. And then we draw an arrow to represent each electron. So that means we're gonna have two arrows because we've got two electrons in this box. When we're putting our arrows in here, we will draw our arrows pointing in different directions to represent the two different spins. So one of these arrows means that we have a clockwise spin and the other means that we have a counterclockwise spin. Now, just like m sub s plus one half does not mean clockwise or counterclockwise, the arrow up also does not mean clockwise or counterclockwise. Just like we have over here, our, our goal is just to come up with two different numbers and over here, our goal is to just have arrows pointing in two different directions. In an energy diagram, what would this look like? Remember, energy diagrams look pretty much the same as orbital diagrams. The only difference is that we have an axis this time. And um, I always like to use straight lines for my energy diagrams. So we've got two electrons in the 1s, arrows pointing in two different directions. So how about the electron configuration? What would that look like? Well, in the electron configuration, basically what we're doing is taking this information and just condensing it down. So we write the name of the orbital, 1s, and the quantity of electrons that are in that orbital, which is 2. So again, when we read this, what we see is in the 1s orbital, we have 2 electrons with the 2 electrons being represented by this part and the 1s orbital being represented by this information. Now, one last thing that I want to add on this video um, is some terms, some definitions. So if we slide back to our hydrogen, when we have an atom like hydrogen that has an electron in an orbital all by itself, we call this type of arrangement paramagnetic. I'm actually going to make that a different color. Paramagnetic. And the definition of paramagnetic is that we have at least one electron alone or unpaired in an orbital. The opposite of paramagnetic is diamagnetic. And that's what we see for helium. So helium is defined as being diamagnetic in a diamagnetic atom, all of the electrons are in pairs. It does not necessarily mean that you have an even number of electrons. It just means that all of them are in pairs. And the last definition that I want to give you, we use even a different color, um, is the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle is what we used right here when we were assigning quantum numbers to helium. You're already familiar with the Pauli exclusion principle. I just haven't given it a name yet. And this just simply says that no two electrons in any given atom can have the exact same quantum numbers. So stick with me. We're going to continue writing electron configurations for atoms that are getting more larger with more electrons and more complicated um, arrangements.